Good afternoon friends, I welcome you all in this session. As you are aware in previous session we discussed about sampling and sampling techniques. In today's session we will see what is sampling distribution. We have seen probability distribution. What is probability distribution? Probability distribution is a distribution of outcomes of an experiment. So, let us say just to recall what we did in probability distribution, let us say you are contesting an elections and the probability that you will get out of let us say total 10,000 votes, probability that you will get 2,000 votes is 0.3, probability that you will get 3,000 votes 0.4 and probability that you will get 1000 vote is point uh, let us say uh, probability that you will get 1000 vote 0.25 and probability that you will get 500 vote is 0 0.05. So, uh, you can have it this is 0 0.05 right probability of getting 500. So, this distribution is nothing but probability distribution right. So, similar to that we have got sampling distribution. Um, whenever uh, we take a sample from population and if we calculate its mean, then uh, for every sample the mean would be different and when you draw the distribution of those, uh, those sample means, it is called sampling distribution of sample mean right. So, a sampling distribution is distribution of all of the possible values of sample statistics right. What is sample statistics? It is about it is it is it is x bar right is not it x bar standard deviation is not it uh, variance it is all about sample right for a given sample size selected from a population. Let us say again let us say you, you select 50 students from uh, let us say a uh, population of 8000. So, you can select this 15, 50 students uh, by, by having different ways is not it. So, let us say you have selected one, one, one sample of 50 students find out you have found out its mean again second sample of 50 students then mean would be different is not it. So, when you draw the distribution of these, these sample uh, means it would be called sampling distribution. So, we, we are interested in the distribution of all potential let us take an example here. So, suppose you sample 50 students from your college regarding their GPA, you obtain many different samples of 50. So, for every, every sample of 50 you will have a different mean right. We are interested in the distribution of all potential means GPA we might calculate for any given sample of 50 students right. So, uh, let us look at how to draw sampling distribution. So, before drawing sampling distribution let us look at uh, how to draw population distribution. So, let us say there is a population of size 4. So, let us say there are 4 students A, B, C and D right and let us say x is random variable and it is representing age of these individuals. So, the age of let us say first student 18, 20, 22 and 24 of years right. Now, if you look at the mean of this population, so how would you calculate mean? You just take addition of all these 4 values divided by 4 right. So, this is mean is mu right population mean right it is called parameter ok. Then st standard deviation of population is this x minus mu whole square divided by n. So, this is 2.23. So, mean is 21 standard deviation is 2.23. Uh, this is population distribution. 
yes. So, if you take us take a student out of four students, then the probability of A getting selected is 0.25, right, is not it. Similarly, for B, C and D, it remains constant, right. So, this is nothing but a population distribution and what kind of distribution is this? This one is a uniform distribution, okay. Let us move on towards sampling distribution. Now, let us say uh, your uh, uh, population is 4 and you are selecting uh, 2 samples, right? Sample size is 2. So, what you are doing? Let us say uh, you have taken a sample, one sample from 4 and noted down the age of that sample. Let us say it is 18 and you have just again put it in the uh, in the container or box whatever it is right. Then one more sample, so again you are getting 18. So, this is first uh, first time you are doing sampling right. So, you have taken two samples and this is with replacement right. So, what are the um, in first observation let us say you are getting 18, second observation again 18 right. So, these are two samples. Similarly, what are the what are different possible combinations? So, you can have 16 such combinations. So, first observation 18, second 18, first 18, second is 20, first 18, second is 22, first 18, second is 24, right. So, these are 4 observations and similarly other observations. So, total 16 possible samples with replacement, right. Now, if you take mean of all these pairs, then mean of first pair is 18, is not it? Mean of this is 20, is not it? Mean of this is you can calculate, right. So, this is 21, right, mean of this is 21, is not it and so on, right. So, you have got 16 sample means. Earlier, uh, how many, uh, what was the mean earlier? It was 21, right. Just look at this, it was just 21, right. So, let us draw sampling distribution. So, this is sampling distribution of these of the, this particular table are these values. So, how did we get this? Uh, how, what is this value and how, how to get this? Sample mean is 18 here. So, this one time 18 is appearing. So, 1 by 16 you will get this value. 19 2 times right. So, 2 by 16 this is 2 by 16. So, 18 and 24 just 1 1 by 16. So, this is for 18 and 24 it is the same value right. Similarly, 19 and 23 2 times right. So, this 23 2 times 19 2 times then 23 times 22 3 times. So, 3 by 16 right. So, this is 20 uh, this is 18 and 24, 19 and 23, 20 and 22, 3 times and this is just uh, 4 times 21. So, 21 by, so this 4 by 16, this is 0 0.25, this is 0 0.25, this is 1 by 4, is not it? So, 0 0.25. So, this is how now, if you look at same, uh, this is this uh, this is sample distribution, and if you compare sample distribution with population distribution, here this uh, this is not a uniform distribution, isn't it? Isn't it? It looks more like normal distribution, isn't it? So, what is the uh, mean and standard deviation of sampling distribution? Earlier it was 
this was mean and standard deviation of population distribution right. Here it is mu x bar and sigma x bar. So, this is 18 so, you just take the average of all these numbers 18 plus 19 plus 19 plus 20, 20, 20 and so on right all these these 16 values divided by 16. So, you will get mean of the sampling distribution which is 21 and if you note down carefully then this is same value as of mu is not it. So, we can say that the uh, mean of population distribution and mean of sampling distribution are one and the same thing, but if you look at let us say standard deviation of sampling distribution then this is 18 minus 21, 21 is the mean whole square. So, you just uh, keep on doing all this calculation for your 16 observations right. So, the last one was 24 is not it is 24. So, 18 minus 21 whole square 19 minus 21 whole square 19 minus 21 whole square and so on right. So, finally, you will get 1.58. So, what was the standard uh, deviation earlier it was 2.23 now it is it has come down isn't it it has come down to 1.58 okay so what 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 is the inference we'll say that the uh, whether population distribution or sampling distribution the mean remains same but the standard deviation decreases in case of sampling distribution so this is comparison of these two this is uniform distribution mean this standard deviation this and this is normal distribution with mean same as of this and standard deviation is reduced to 1.58. Okay. So, is there any relationship between uh, this and this? Uh, uh, we know that uh, there is no relationship uh, in fact, they, they, they are equal only is not it. So, we can say that mu is equal to mu x bar is not it this is the relationship right. But what about sigma and sigma x bar? Now, there is a relationship, and this is the relationship, and this is called standard error of the mean. So, as we have said, that different samples of same sample size from same population will lead would give you different sample means. So, this this the variability amongst these sample means would be measured by standard error of mean it is not called standard deviation, but we call it a standard error of mean because uh, we are calculating how these different means are varying or what is the variability amongst these different sample means. So, that is that is that that we calculated by that we calculate by standard error of mean right. And of course, uh, this uh, assumes that sampling is with replacement or without replacement from an infinite population. So, this is the relationship. So, this is sampling or let us call this standard error of mean is equal to standard deviation divided by under root of mean. So, the standard error of mean decreases as the sample size increases is not it because this is denomination. So, if you increase this, this value will decrease. In fact, this can be proved by uh, uh, taking an example as well which we have taken in next couple of slides. So, if a population is normal with mean this and standard deviation this, this this sampling distribution of mean is also normally distributed with mean this and standard deviation this, this is what we have proved is not it. In fact, we have seen uh, z value in case of uh, probability distributions, we will see the z value for sampling distribution as well. So, z value for sampling distribution of sample mean is this it is very similar to what we have seen 
it was x minus mu divided by sigma is in delta. So, same thing instead of x you have got x bar instead of mean you have got mean of the sampling distribution and instead of this you have got standard error of mean is not it. So, you can put uh, sigma x bar is equal to this here in this equation. So, this sample mean population mean population standard deviation and small n is sample size. So, we can calculate value of z for a given value of x bar mu and n because if we if we know sigma and n we can easily calculate standard error of mean. So, let us look at this slide. So, what is the relationship between these two? So, no, this is normal population distribution and mean is this which is equal to the mean of sampling distribution and this this normal sampling distribution and both has got the same mean is not it this is what we have written here. So, mean is same in both cases is not it in both these cases. Okay. So, what what we want we uh, this uh, mean is unbiased unbiased calculator of population mean is not it. So, you can use or you can uh, use sample mean to know the population mean or sample proportion to know the population proportion. So, the properties of sampling distribution is that as n increases as sample size increases standard error of mean decreases. So, this is the standard error of mean for small smaller sample size and for larger sample size. So, if you look at these two curves carefully um, the the as you increase sample size uh, the uh, standard error of mean decreased here is not it because in the formula it is mentioned like this is not it. So, smaller sample size and larger sample size sample mean sampling distribution if population is not normal. So, far what we have seen sampling distribution mean is equal to population distribution and sampling distribution standard error of mean is is 1 by under root of nth time the standard deviation of population, but what if the population is not normal. So, that relationship which we discussed holds good for normal population, but what would be the shape of sampling distribution if the population is not normal. Then uh, a theorem is called central limit theorem comes into picture and according to this theorem even if the population is not normal the sample mean from the population will be approximately normal as long as the sample size is large enough. So, the sampling distribution of a non normal population will also be a normal distribution if sample size is large enough and what is that large enough we will see in next slide. So, the properties of sampling distribution will remain same even if the population is not normal or non normal. Okay. So, this central limit theorem what is central limit theorem is the sample size gets large enough the sampling distribution becomes almost normal regardless of shape of initial population. So, just see this this is your shape of uh, population which is non normal, but the shape of sampling distribution is normal okay? because we have selected large numbers of uh, samples from population. So, this central limit theorem quite an important and useful theorem in business applications. So, this is what uh, we have just seen 
this is your population distribution which is not normally distributed, but uh, it is a sampling distribution is normal and their means are same is not it same just one straight line is not it. So, this is central tendency and this is variance. Okay. So, what is central limit theorem? Irrespective of nature of population, the sampling distribution will always be normal as we increase sample size. So, let us look at this example. So, you, you have got different types of population distributions. So, this exponential distribution. So, if you take a sample of let us say 2 units, then the sample distribution would be this. If you increase sample size, then it would be like this, but if it is 30, then it is it becomes a normal distribution. Initial let us say initial population distribution is a uniform distribution, just say this is uniform distribution. If you take 2 units and draw its uh, draw sample distribution, then it would be like this a triangular shape. This is when you increase sample size and this becomes normal is not it when n is equal to 30. Similarly, similar is the case with u shaped distribution and normal distribution of course, it has to be there. In case of normal this will be normal, but in case of non normal distribution as well your sampling distributions are normal right. So, this is quite an important slide which will give you an idea about shape of sampling distribution even if the population is non normal. But we have to take a decision how large sample size should be. So, generally it is said that uh, for n is equal to more than 30 or 30 will give sampling distribution nearly normal. And for fairly symmetric distributions even if n is equal to more than 15 will give you a sample distribution which is normal. But generally we will take n is equal to 30 or more than 30 right. So, how large is large enough? It is 30 or more than 30. Okay. So, let us look at couple of examples on sampling distribution. So, let us say uh, at a tire store uh, several customers have purchased tire and the owner of the tire store selected a sample of 40 customers, a, for, a sample of 40 customers he selected randomly. And he knows from past experience that on an average every customer spends 85 dollars to purchase tire with a standard deviation of 9 dollars. Now, if he selects randomly 40 customers then what is the probability that the sample average expenditure per customer for this sample will be 87 dollars or more. So, we want to know what is the probability or uh, what percentage of time average expenditure of these randomly selected 40 customers would be 87 or more than 87. So, how would you draw a distribution for this? Right. So, let us look at this mean is 85 standard deviation is 9 right. So, first of all calculate z value x bar minus mu. So, this is your sample mean is not it this is your population mean which is given 85. So, it is x minus x bar x bar minus mu this is nothing but uh, mu mean minus uh, x value. So, 87 minus 85 divided by 9 is standard deviation small n is 40 right. So, this becomes 1.41. So, in fact what we want is uh, the average expenditure per customer for this sample will be 87 or more. So, 87 is towards right side or left side of this is towards right side right. So, let us let us write 87 here right. 
So, if you convert this scale x scale into z scale, this is z is equal to 0 and this becomes 1.41, is not it. So, what our what is our question? This sample will be 87 or more than this, right. So, what which area we want to calculate? 87 or more, right. So, this area we are interested in, is not it. So, let us look at z table because we know that this area is 50 percent, is not it and we know also we know that this area is 50 percent as well, is not it. So, if we know this area, so we will subtract this area from 50 percent to get this area, is not it. So, let us look at this. So, z value is 1 point 41, isn't it? So 1.41. This one, 1.4 is this. 1.41 is this. 0 0.4 to 07. So this area is 0 0.4 to 0.7. We are interested in this area. So what to do? Since we know this this side this area is 50 percent, so we'll subtract this area from. 0.5. So, 0.5 minus 0.4207, this is equal to 0.0793, is not it. So, what we will say? So, what is our conclusion? Approximately 8 percent of the time, a random sample of 40 customers from this population will yield a sample mean expenditure of 87 or more, is not it. So, whenever uh, you take sample, let us say out of 100 samples, 8 percent of the time if you take samples of 40 customers from this population, then the sample mean expenditure would be 87 and more than that, right. This is quite a, an interesting example and quite a simple as well. Let us look at one more example. Suppose that during any 4 hour in a large department store, the average number of shoppers is 448 with a standard deviation of 21, right. So, mean is this, mean is this, mean is let us say 448 and standard deviation is 21. What is the probability that a random sample of 49 different shopping hours? will yield a sample mean between 441 and 446. So, 441 and 446. So, this is 441, 446, this 448 is not it which is mean, right. So, first of all what we should do? So, what we have to find? We have to find out this area, is not it? Because what is the probability that a random sample of 49 different shopping hours will yield sample mean between between right 441 and 446 isn't it so this is what we want to calculate so first of all convert all these x values into z values isn't it so z value here would be 0 and what would be the z values towards left side of this um, would those z values be positive or negative? All z values towards right side of mean would be positive and towards left side would be negative. Okay. So, let us calculate z values. So, we know mean is equal to 448 standard deviation 21 small n or sample size 49. So, we want to find out p x ranging between 441 and 446. So, calculate z score using this table, let us call this a, a, a 5 table, a dot 5 table. So, z is equal to minus 2.33. Since this is a table which gives you area under the curve from mean, right and z is equal to 2 this in positive direction and z is equal to 2 in ne negative direction the area will be 
same, is not it. So, z is equal to minus 2.33 right for 441. So, we want to know area from here to here right, we want this area, this, this area under this curve right, this area is not it. Okay. So, 2.33, 2.3 right and 3, 3 is this 0 0.4901. So, this is 0 0.4901 from here to here right. What about uh, this area? Let me put it in this way right, this area. Now, this area is again from 0 to 0 0.67. So, 0 0.6 is where this is 0.6, is not it? And 7 is uh, this one 0 0.2486. So, this is from here to here is 0 0.2486, right. Now, we are interested in, let me delete this all these things, okay, okay. let me use some other color for, for the time being. So, we are interested in this area, right? is not it, which is between 441 and 446. We know area from mean to 441, we know area from mean to 446. So, this area will be calculated just by subtracting area from 0 0.4901 to 0 0.2486. So, this becomes 24.15. So, the probability value of being between this to this is 24.1. So, we will say that there is 24.15 percent chance of randomly selected 49 hourly periods for which the sample mean would be between 441 to 446. So, this is another example wherein we have seen how to find out probability between given values of x. Now, you can solve uh, examples uh, like this and can get the answer. So, let me summarize what we have done in this session. In this session, we have discussed something about sampling distribution and what is sampling distribution? Sampling distribution is a distribution of sample means drawn from a population of similar sample size and the sample mean would always be equal to population mean, but, but the population uh, distribution is let us say uniform, but its sampling distribution would be would not be uniform, it would be normal as you increase sample size. So, this is true in case of normal population and this is true even for non-normal population as well. So, even if your population is let us say uniformly distributed or u shaped distributed or some other population, population distribution which is non-normal, then if you take samples and draw sampling distribution, then that sampling distribution would also be a normal distribution. And here is the role of central limit theorem comes into picture and it says that irrespective of shape of normal population as the sample size increases, the shape of sampling distribution approaches normal distribution. And we have seen relationship between the mean of population distribution and sampling distribution 
and that relationship was what? The relationship was was mu is equal to mu x bar, isn't it? So the mu the mu of population, the mean of population distribution and mean of sampling distribution were same, but the sampling distribution uh, rather than calling standard deviation of sampling distribution we call it this is called standard error of mean right which is this is not it. So, with this let me complete this session in next session we will work out couple of examples related to sampling distribution and we will carry out couple of exercises as well. Thank you very much.